The US Navy is looking to turn its newest air-to-air -air missile, the massive AIM-174 gunslinger, into an air-launched hypersonic weapon interceptor, using a new warhead designed for area effects. Now, the US Missile Defense Agency just published a new solicitation to industry looking to develop, test, and field a new series of warheads designed specifically for hypersonic missile defense, using what they describe as, quote, wide area effect concepts. Now, this request is specifically for warheads and not for new weapons, with the intent to field service-ready capabilities that can be easily integrated into America's existing air defense apparatus. But don't let that fool you. Despite their plug-and-play intentions, the addition of such a warhead to the AIM-174 could create an air defense capability unmatched by any system or platform anywhere on the planet to date, effectively turning Super Hornets into roving air defense assets capable of bringing down hypersonic missiles all on their own. So let's talk about this incredibly capable weapon and why it's only getting more capable by the day. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. The Gunslinger is already a uniquely capable weapon, with a huge 140-pound high-explosive warhead. Now, that's more than three times the size of the warhead in the AIM-120 AMRAAM, and nearly seven times the size of the warhead in the AIM-9 Sidewinder. Its maximum engagement range may even exceed 300 miles, making it one of the furthest-reaching air-to-air missiles on the planet. Now, this weapon has such significant reach, in fact, that it's meant to gather its target data from multiple sources while closing with an enemy aircraft, as the missile reaches further out than the launching fighter's radar could even see. Now, based directly on the ship-launched SM-6 interceptor, this massive air-to-air -air missile stretches nearly 15 and a half feet long, with a roughly 13 and a half inch diameter and a total weight of around 1,900 pounds. Now that makes the Gunslinger nearly two feet longer and about 900 pounds heavier than the legendary AIM-54 Phoenix that once equipped the Navy's F-14 Tomcats, while boasting the ability to reach targets maybe more than three times further away. But the AIM-174 and the SM-6 that it's based on were built for a lot more than just long distance engagements alone. This weapon carries an enlarged radar seeker that was derived from the one found inside the AMRAAM, along with the data link necessary for mid-course target updates, sufficient propulsion to close with targets at around Mach 3.5, and a combination of tail fins and canards that allow for extreme aerobatic maneuvers. As a result, in its surface-launched form, which uses a Mark 72 rocket booster to get airborne initially, the SM-6 is rated for a vast array of intercepts, ranging from sea-skimming supersonic cruise missiles to just about any fixed or rotary-wing aircraft and even medium-range ballistic missiles in their terminal phases of flight. The SM-6 is so effective at intercepting fast-moving and maneuverable targets that it's currently considered to be the only air defense interceptor in the world that's rated to bring down modern hypersonic missiles, at least in the right set of circumstances. And if all that wasn't enough, this weapon has a secondary capability to strike surface targets like enemy warships or ground facilities with roughly seven times the explosive power of a Hellfire missile. Now, with all this capability packed in, it's really no wonder the Navy opted to mount these weapons on F-A-18 Super Hornets to not only dramatically increase its potential engagement ranges, but with the development of new area effect warheads, they could provide airborne hypersonic missile defense capabilities for carrier strike groups and a whole lot more. Now, the value of airborne hypersonic missile defense for carriers is pretty easy to glean. The F-A-18 Super Hornet, which is currently the only fighter known to carry the Gunslinger, has an unclassified combat radius, or the distance it can fly out 
deploy weapons and make it back on internal fuel of right around 511 miles, though it's certain to be considerably less while toting a full loadout of AIM-174s, AIM-120s, and AIM-9s, as we've seen in some particularly impressive displays of the fighter's carriage capabilities. Nonetheless, this could allow fighters to orbit the carrier strike group, bolstered by the refueling capabilities of other Super Hornets doing buddy refueling and soon the MQ-25 Stingray drone refueler. At the earliest signs of an inbound hypersonic missile, these aircraft could launch their AIM-174s from much further out than the Navy's SM-6s, creating what amounts to a second and maybe even third or fourth layer of hypersonic air defense between adversaries and aircraft carrier. Air defense is never a sure thing, least of all when dealing with maneuvering hypersonic weapons. So adding a second, maybe even a third or a fourth layer of air defense means adding a second, third, and maybe even a fourth opportunity to intercept an inbound weapon. But more broadly speaking, this could also allow the Navy to scramble fighters for hypersonic missile defense over or around other high-value targets on extremely short notice, creating temporary air defense effects over the battlefield to bridge the gap until ground-based systems can be repositioned to take over the job. This could be really important in rapidly escalating situations as something of a hypersonic defense stopgap in far-flung theaters. But in order to be really effective, somebody first needs to turn that massive 140-pound warhead carried by both the SM-6 and the AIM-174 into a more, quote, area effect oriented weapon. These warheads are already designed to create a huge blast radius to bring down airborne targets, but a payload designed specifically to increase that radius while maintaining enough kinetic force to whack a Mach 20 missile out of the sky would dramatically increase the weapon's chances at a successful shootdown. But whether or not the US Navy and its industry partners can really make that happen is still yet to be determined. And with that ends yet another edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.